Hello by the programmers. So in this video, I'm going to show you that how you can create a machine learning model which will predict whether a student will be placed in a company or not based on these parameters. First is age, then we have gender, then we have stream, then uh, whether the student did an internship or not, then the CGPA, then whether the student lived in the hostel or not, then the history of backlog. And this is our final output column. Okay, so obviously this is a supervised learning problem and it's a classification problem. Okay, so I won't tell you that what model we are going to use in this project. I'll first show you the data, how the data is processed, like uh, how we change this male and female strings into numbers and the streams into numbers. And then we'll discuss that what machine learning model we are going to use for this project. Okay. But two things are clear. First, this is supervised and second, this is the classification problem. Okay. So let me close this. And uh, as you can see that I have already uploaded this code with the database on my GitHub repository. I'll provide the link in the description and also the page from which I downloaded this data set. It's a Kaggle page, so you can go there also. Okay. So let me open the Jupyter notebook here. Just a second. Let me open the Jupyter notebook. CMD Jupyter Jupyter notebook. Okay, so this is our untitled IPNB file. Let me open this and uh, delete all the previous results so that you can see all the things happening in real time. Okay. Okay. So before we move ahead, let's have a word from our today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by an academy. Are you a student or a working professional who is looking for a great career in software development? Then you have to think about these aspects like what's trending in the industry and the kind of questions being asked in the interview. What's the thought process behind the architecture of great applications like Google, Amazon, Zomato and Ola and how to improve your core chef ranking. So to achieve all these goals, what you need to do is you need to go to unacademy.com slash goal slash career as a software developer. I'll provide this link in the description. And first, let's talk about the host or the mentors of these courses. Now, these hosts are working with some of the top companies like Google, Amazon, to name a few. They are seven star coders on CodeChef and are industry experts with years of experience. And what they'll do is they'll walk you through their own industry experience and interact with a lot of guests like HR and industry leaders of top companies where they'll ask questions raised by you. Now this was about the mentors. Let's go to the live sessions and see what they have to offer for you. Now in these live episodes, you'll get an opportunity to ask tech HR about top 20 questions and industry leaders directly about their recruitment process in startups and multinational companies. What is the eligibility and how to apply and how they build such great projects. And not only this, you can participate in mock interviews and learn courses on programming languages, blockchain and crypto, cloud computing, tech aspects of digital marketing, data analysis, and many more. In this show, the host would cover weekly updates about jobs, roles and responsibility for that job update and how to apply for those jobs and what all skills are required to apply for those jobs. Now, who is this show for? Undergraduate students who are looking for internships and full-time opportunities in various companies for tech roles. Now, what is the unique selling point of this show? This is a weekly show where user would be explained about various internship and full-time job opportunity across product and service based company along with a live demo on how to apply and customize resume for specific role in one hour. Now you must be thinking that you have to pay a hefty price for courses like this. But no, you have to pay 999 rupees per month to get access to all of these courses. But wait, there is more. If you use my code HARSHITROY, you will get an additional 10% off. Let me show you. You need to just write HARSHITROY and click apply and you will get an instant 100 rupees off. So all the links will be provided in the description. Definitely check them out and let's move on to our next project. Okay, so. As you can see, we are using Jupyter Notebook here. I have created a separate video on how you can install Jupyter Notebook and uh, some of the basic commands of Jupyter Notebook. Okay, 
all the links will be provided in the description so first of all we import pandas here with the short notation of pd pandas will be used for loading the data and for data pre-processing once again whatever we are doing here i have created a separate video link of all those video will be provided in the description including pandas and everything okay so uh, first of all we are loading our csv file the name of the csv file is college place uh, this is our csv file uh, we are loading this by using the read csv class from pandas so let me run these commands real quick first we are importing pandas then we are loading the data set and this dot head command is used to display the first five rows okay if you want to see the bottom five you can write dot tail here okay now just looking at the data you can point out a few problems here first of all age and gender are string values and we don't want string values we want categorical values okay so let's also see what is the shape or what are the number of rows so we have two nine six six uh, rows and uh, first of all we have to replace our male with zero and female with one now these are not comparative values these are just some numerical values given to these string values okay these are not representative of anything okay so uh, let's replace uh, the male with zero and a female with one okay now let's see our head once again and as you can see male is replaced by zero and female with one make sure that these are numeric values okay don't make them string don't assign inverted commas here okay then we have to replace the uh, streams also so we have to first check that what are the unique streams so these are the unique streams electronics and communication computer science information technology mechanical electrical civil so we'll assign value to all of these uh, streams once again these are not comparative values these are not comparing anything these are just some numeric values assigned to each stream okay so data frame stream dot replace and uh, this is a dictionary and these are the values being replaced okay and uh, let's run this and let me show you the head once again okay uh, and as you can see streams are also replaced by numeric values and once again make sure that these are not strings these are numbers okay uh, then let's check if there is a, a null value in our data set okay now null values can really mess with your uh, machine learning model if they are there okay so make sure that they are removed before you train your machine learning model so uh, let's see if there is a null value no there is no null value over here now this is the matplotlib part that i did just to see the relationship between uh, each values this is not required to create the machine learning model so i am just uh, skipping this part then we have to divide our uh, independent value and dependent value so independent values are the factors the parameters this age gender stream internship cgpa hostel and history of backlogs are independent values they are affecting this last dependent value okay we have to predict this placed or not placed value and this placed or not placed value is dependent on these independent values okay once again i have explain this concept in one of our previous video link will be provided in the description okay so moving ahead and uh, okay so data frame placed or not is our y value this is our dependent value this is our final output value and x is all the other dependent values okay all the parameters that are affecting this placed or not placed value if there is a value which is like randomly placed and there is no relation with this value then you can remove that column also but here all the values are related to this one so we don't need to remove any okay so y is placed or not x is everything except placed or not okay so let's divide this now let's see how our x is looking okay so as you can see all the um, columns except the last one now we have to split our data set into test and train okay so oops just say we have to uh, split our data set into test and train so you saw what model we are using <laughs> but uh, i'll explain you what model it is in just a second so uh, first let's split 
uh, split our data set into test and train. Okay, our data set is split into test and train and the test size is uh, 0.1% or 10% of the whole data set. So we are using XG boost classifier model here. Now, I really want to explain you the theory, the maths behind XG boost, but I can't in this video because to understand XG boost model, you have to first understand gradient boosting because XG boost means extreme gradient boosting. So to understand, understand extreme, you have to first understand gradient boosting. And before you understand gradient boosting, we have to understand that what is ensemble learning. Now, we have already discussed one of the model from ensemble learning. It was random forest and it comes in bagging type. Okay, link will be provided in the description in case you want to watch. So it comes in the bagging type. In the same way, gradient boosting is boosting type ensemble learning model. So yeah, it will be uploaded on my channel very soon. I'm trying my very best, but as you know, I don't have a team or anything like that. I am the only one managing all the platforms, whether it's Instagram, website or uh, both my channels, Hindi and English. All the editing and everything is done by me only. And as the channel is growing, I can't upload anything I want. The quality of the content is very important for me. But don't worry. I will start the ensemble learning from uh, next week and then we'll move on step by step and cover the XG boost model also. Okay, so don't worry about that. Now, moving ahead, you have seen we are using the XG boost model here and we are using XG boost classifier model. Okay, so by this, you can guess that we are also having a regression model. So we'll discuss all the theory and all the maths behind this uh, XG boost in in that video. For now, you can just uh, understand XG boost as similar to random forest. It also uses multiple decision tree, but in different way. And what's that different way? I'll explain you in that video. Okay. For now, just understand that it also uses multiple decision trees. And yeah, also one more thing, you have to install this package. It doesn't comes with a uh, SKLearn, so you have to install this. So pip install XG boost. And uh, it's actually a big package. It's like a 100 MB package, so it will take some time. But for me, it's already installed. Okay, so now let's close this and gets back uh, and let's get back to our code. So um, after calling the XGB classifier model, we have to create the class instance. So CLF is the variable name and we are creating the XGB classifier instance. And these are the parameter. First is the learning rate. Okay. So learning rate is one of the ratio variable in our uh, algorithm formula. Now I'm trying so hard not to deviate and start uh, explaining you the actual model. So for now, just understand that this is one of the formula variable. Okay. 0.09. And N estimate is the number of decision trees. Okay. Then as we always do, we fit our uh, X chain and Y chain on the machine learning model. Let me do one thing. Let me uh, run the code alongside. Okay. And uh, don't worry. This is not a error. This is a warning. And uh, this is about label encoding. We have already done label encoding. So we don't need to worry about that. It's just saying that it will be removed in the later version of uh, XGBU. So it's just giving you a warning. Okay. There's no error in our code. Then I was just trying something here. You don't need to run this code. Then we are creating the prediction variable and uh, uh, CLF is the model. So CLF dot predict and uh, we are using the test data, uh, test data to uh, predict the value here. Okay. So uh, then we are calling the accuracy score from sklearn dot matrices and uh, we don't need all this. We only need the uh, accuracy score, accuracy score. And uh, what we'll do is this is a string plus str of accuracy score of y test dot predict. So we are comparing the predicted value with the actual value. Okay, so let me run this code. And uh, as you can see, it's 84%. Okay, so uh, that's actually not very good. And uh, 
I don't know why I have done this before and uh, the output was around 89%. So uh, just give me a second. Let me check that. Uh, what is the problem here? Okay, so I am back now. I don't know why that time the accuracy was so low. But now let's try once again. You can see I haven't changed the code. And uh, let's run the commands once again. I actually restarted my computer. I don't know why previously it was showing such low accuracy. Okay, so now as you can see, it's 88%. So it's very close to 89%, which is pretty good accuracy for a classification model like this. Now, if you have just worked with regression model, 88% is not that good accuracy. But when it comes to classification and problem like this, where we have parameters with such restricted values, 88% is pretty good accuracy. So this is it. All the links will be provided below. The notebook, the data set, all the data pre-processing videos and everything will be provided in the description. So if you want, you can check them out and we'll meet in the next lecture where we'll create something more awesome. Okay, so meet you there. Bye-bye.